Oh my god, it's a vlog. Y'all, Wales is one of the most beautiful places I have ever visited. And I did that three months ago. <laughs> In typical timely fashion. I just got back from Wales in April. So for my first ever trip overseas, I visited Aberystwyth uh, to see one of my best friends in the whole wide world, my good buddy Arth. Met up with uh, Starlight from the Discord as well, aka Gaius, for a few days. And we just had an incredible time. They really made that trip special. Uh, first off, we stayed at this hotel called the Castle, nestled right into the middle of this gorgeous, gorgeous town. It was a minute a walk away from the... A minute a walk away? A minute walk away from the beach. And it's just this nice, rustic place where the front lobby is a bar. Not like there was a bar in the lobby. It was a bar and there's just, you know, a dog roaming around as you do. And it's the best dog, too! Just wandering from patron to patron. Just to be petted. Great, great first impression to be made on arrival. So we have this small Welsh town, we have a beautiful hotel, I'm surrounded by close friends. Already this is the perfect vacation, right? Uh, Arth also got me back into playing Pokemon Go, which I didn't know how much I wanted to play that again until that weekend. And oh, been going strong on that. We just marauded around town taking gyms and raids. One of the highlights though, was a bookstore. And it's one of the coolest bookstores I've ever seen. You know, it's not like this big, orderly, overly sterile chain bookstore like a Barnes & Noble or something. No, 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 no. This one was built into a home. It was a home converted into what I can only describe as a wizard's library. There's just no rhyme or reason to anything in there. It's just stacks and stacks of every type of book that you could hope for. So you just spend all your time in there in awe of this repository. It's chaos, but it's also so cozy and interesting. Barely have the words for it. You know, there are classics. You look around, you can find modern stuff. You can find Harry Potter and whatnot. And then there's everything in between. Anything that you uh, could hope to find, you will, if you spend enough time perusing every stack, you will find something. It's the best kind of mess. Like, there are books in there that look like they could be hundreds of years old, if not older. It's just this magical collection. It felt like going into another world. It was really magical. Every inch of the store is just stacks of tomes of any imaginable subject. And again, this isn't like a carved out retail space. It's just a house that is flooded with books. It's like the home of the greatest hoarder of books, but clean, you know? It's not like encrusted in filth and dust. You walk in and you can't help your eyes going wide and your jaw going slack as you wander through inspecting every stack. It's, it's the kind of place you don't go in so you can shop for something specific. You go in and you gawk and you discover something. That's why I keep saying it's so magical. It was the coolest. Like, you go upstairs and, oh, what's this? There's a sink and all these cabinets. Oh, this must be a kitchen, but there are books piled up in the sinks and in the cabinets and, like, these ancient-looking tomes on the highest shelves. They look like dusty old thick spell books you would see in some kind of fantasy movie. It was, it was fantastical. It was so good. And yeah, most of this video is going to be, oh my god, I traveled thousands of miles and crossed the ocean to spend a week uh, away from my home with some of my best friends. And, oh hey, look at this cool hole, hole in the wall bookstore, because it was so cool. I love this store a lot. I'll go back and buy stuff from them every single time I go back to Aberystwyth, which I hope is going to be every year now. <laughs> And then you take a step back outside and you're you're back in the real world. And it's beautiful out there, but it's so different. It's like a different reality. Uh, so we differ we visited a different bookstore, which I don't know if it was a local chain or what. It was, you know, much more like the bookstores we're probably all used to. And Arth, sweet, sweet boy, bought a few books, read them in a week, 
and then sent me home with one of them and he bought uh, two board games. One of them is called Exploding Kittens, which is this simple little card game where you're just drawing and trying to avoid drawing a bomb and then there are some contingencies in case you do and it's it, it's pretty simple but it's also very all right but then there's unstable unicorns from the same creators and it's way more varied in the kinds of cards you have and what they do and their effects and the level of strategy you can employ it's more complex and to win you have to you have to get uh seven unicorns in your stable but there are like upgrades there are downgrades or like traps or whatever <laughs> And y'all, Arthur is horrifying at this game. He is a Yu-Gi-Oh villain. He is Maximilian Pegasus when playing this. He would just pull these long combos in this game with this terrifying smile on his face and he would just destroy both of us like he'd played this game a thousand times. Gaius and I were plotting his murder because that would be the only way to stop him. So we we're just idly all on the bed chatting as we play. We're going back and forth about how we need to kill him and dump his body in the river. And then he just ends a combo that was going on all through this conversation with this big shit-eating grin on his face. It's like, I win. The pressure of this man's soul was demoralizing. He is an anime card game villain. Me and Gaius had to work together to get our only wins over him. Uh, at one point, Gaius was so thoroughly annihilated in Unstable Unicorns that he went into the into the bathroom in the fetal position. It was so good. We had a really good time. Oh, there was at least one night where one of us, uh, where none of us, I should say, could sleep. So we all just got up at like 3 a.m. and played board games and watched weird British TV for hours. Uh, and then went out into town like a bunch of goddamn miscreants seeking to buy a single Le Mans because of a deeply stupid inside joke that formed over the week. Oh my god, what else? I can't believe that like for probably 15 minutes or whatever I've just talked about like this cool bookstore, which was really cool. And how horrifying Arth is at uh, Unstable Unicorns. The beach was gorgeous. The the entire town is so picturesque and cozy and warm. Uh, everyone is un was unbelievably nice. We were within walking distance, not only from the beach, but an actual castle, which I don't know, maybe if you live somewhere where there are just a lot of castles, that's mundane to you. But to me, that was like, what the fuck? This is incredible. Yeah, an actual castle in this awe-inspiring monument that was really touching and uh it was to it was dedicated to fallen sailors facing the sea or i mean it was facing the sea dedicated to fallen sailors holy shit i had such a good time it was it was like a really low-key week too especially for the amount of travel but it was just nice and you know, all the food was impeccable all week i'm trying to think of everything we ate there was an amazing local chinese place uh, with this brilliant crispy beef, these prawn chips that were really good. A lot of stuff that I've never had before. Uh, there was something that was like fried seaweed, which I think was actually fried cabbage with some sugar. Uh, which I'm, I'm super down for. I normally hate cabbage. But, you know, kimchi is really good and so was this. Uh, we had a lot of fried duck. This plum sauce that was delicious. I never thought I would like that. There was some banging pizza place with like, honestly, some of the best pizza I've ever had. And I live on the East Coast of the U.S., so high praise. Uh, right by the train station, there is an Indian place. So we got curry and kebabs one day, went to this chain called Witherspoons multiple times throughout the weekend. That was like our second home. We basically had our own booth reserved there. Uh, Gaius even ended up uh, treating us all. Gaius and his girlfriend treated us to a uh, steak dinner, uh, they, his final day with us. That was really nice, so thank you, Gaius. But the first night that we met up with him, uh, we got so drunk. We made big mistakes back to back to back. Because we started off with like a drink each or something and our meals. You know, Arth and I got to, to Spoons, we ordered our stuff. Ordered uh, Gaius something for when he got there. Finally met up. It was a really good time. 
Then we saw something on the menu that looked real good, and it came in a pitcher. Naturally, we got a pitcher. And you know we wanted some food to soak up all the alcohol. But then wait, what the fuck is this drink on the menu? It was some weird, fancy-looking, all-white cocktail. I don't even remember what was in it, we just kept calling it Zirconium. And by this point, we have multiple drinks each, and one pitcher already, and too much food, and we're like, yeah! Yeah, get this second pitcher! Do it! So we made mistakes that kind of compounded on each other, that just turned into more mistakes, and we got very drunk and stumbled into a cab, like a bunch of goofballs. Uh, to take us, like, two blocks up the street to our hotel, because we could not walk. <laughs> oh, the in-house breakfast was really good, too. Because it's just, it's not one specific thing or, like, a thing of the day. It's a spread, a really nice one at that. I remember there being Welsh cakes, uh, barabrith, fresh fruit, a cheese platter, so much good stuff. The best apple juice I've ever had. Man, what a week! What a week! I can't believe that it's been three months and all of this is still just like welling up in me. I'm so excited to go back. I think I'm going back next year in the middle of Eurovision or like uh, as Eurovision's finals are starting so we can all just talk shit live instead of having to do it over Discord this year. And it, it was just a chill week. Arth is the best. I love Gaius. It was an unbelievable time. Uh, it was over way too soon as well. And yeah, I'm going to make it a point to go back and visit. At, it, hopefully at least once a year. Uh, the only thing that, that I will say uh, that I will deal with next year in a different way is I absolutely will not fly into Cardiff. Uh, because that involves a five and a half hour trip across multiple train transfers to get to Aberystwyth. There's no way I'm doing that again. I did that twice in the span of a week. Uh, so it's multiple train transfers in a place that I've never been, an ocean away from my home. That's all already sort of daunting and stressful, but it went fine the first time. It's just that it's five and a half hours on top of the fact that that my flight was from Philadelphia to Dublin, where I had a layover, and then from Dublin to Cardiff. And that's already like a whole day of travel, including the two hours ahead of time, or the two and a half-ish I have to leave because the airport's like 45 minutes away from my home. So get up super early, or super early in the morning to get to the first airport way ahead of time so I can get through security and make sure I'm not late for my flight. Then, long-ass flight to Dublin, long layover, uh, not too long of a flight from Dublin to Cardiff, and then, on top of that, having to figure out the train schedule and all the transfers, and it's five and a half more hours of travel before I even get to Everest with. That is so, so much, and it's stressful, and I'd never done it before, so it's extra anxiety-inducing. But that was done. That was done on the first day. Had a super good week. And then on the way back, I was using the train line app over there for the uh, train schedule. Except it was wrong, so I missed a transfer and had to Uber like an hour away from the train that I missed to Cardiff Airport for my return flight. And then my flight home wasn't until I think like 6 or 7 a.m. local time. Well, because it's such a long commute to the airport from Aber. Uh, and the last train left like mid-afternoon or late afternoon to get there, I got to Cardiff at midnight. That airport is not a regional airport, but it is small like one, and it's barren at night. With nothing to do, you can't go through security because no one is there that late at night. Uh, you can't, like there's no lounge or anything, so I had seven hours to wait overnight after all that travel back, after commuting all that way. I just tried to sleep on those super uncomfortable metal benches in the, uh, like, before check-in at the airport. God, it was, it was miserable that night. And that's before the super long flight back home and all that and, and taking the train back, uh, from Philly to my house. 
all that stuff. And so next year, what I decided I'm going to do is I'm going to fly into Birmingham because I found out that that's actually way quicker because there is a three hour train that's a straight shot instead of involving three transfers. Uh, so I'm going to take a, the flight to from Philly to Birmingham and then it's a straight shot to Aber. So aside from some commuting stress, I had the most wonderful time while I was actually there hanging out with Arthur and Gaius. I am so blessed to have, to have met up with them there and to have spent all that time with one of my closest friends in the world. Oh, I played D&D from a train too. That was that was a cool experience. I think the the in-character explanation for why I wasn't talking on mic was that my character had laryngitis for that week. So I just typed everything in, which I think I roleplayed as like he was writing notes on on like sticky notes or something. Dude, what a what a good time. Looking forward to going back, and, uh, ooh, that was my indulgent travel log. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good night, y'all.